hooked up with Wacker Mac and Rob Rossi. I'm getting loved up with Wacker Mac and Rob Rossi. Well, I'm loved up, but I'm okay. It's gonna get loved up anyway. You better call back and post it. Just getting loved up with Wacker Mac and Rob Rossi. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Rocker Mike and Rob Presents. We have a very special show today. We have a returning guest, filmmaker and director, Danny Garcia. Say hi, Danny. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, man, you're you're a returning guest, man. You've been on the show like three, four times now already. I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. I'm glad, I'm glad to be back. Thanks. Appreciate it. So you've got a new film out called Ghosts of the Chelsea and Other Rock and Roll Stories. And yeah. it's going to be premiered September 5th at Joe's Pub in New York City. Also September 7th at the Regent Theater in Arlington, Massachusetts. And then once again yep. on the 11th at Joe's Pub back in New York. And you got quite a few other dates after that as well. So, yep. Danny, what made you make a movie about the Chelsea? Well, um, you know, after, well, actually, while, while we were making the documentary on Mexican City nightclubbing, um, you know, we were interviewing all these people and Ruby Lynn who was this Warhol superstar, and then it was, you know, a rock and roller as well. She had her own band, the Rednecks. Um, she, she told us this story about going to the Chelsea to meet Bob Marley, and, you know, they were smoking huge slips, rolled with the New York Times paper, you know, <laughs> with the newspaper, yeah? Like, huge. So that really sparked... The idea, you know, I was like, shit, you know, I could put together, you know, a bunch of stories about crazy people living at the Chelsea. So that's really what started, you know, kickstarted the project, really, you know, just one single anecdote. And uh, I knew, and I know Man Lai, she's been living at the Chelsea since like 1981, I think. And right. she was our way, she was our way in to the hotel so we could shoot the interviews there. Uh, you know, most of the interviews are shot in there, except, you know, Howie Pyro that I did in L.A. when I was doing some vacation. You know, we spoke about the Chelsea, so I'm using a bit of that as well. And me and Leon. Um, but the rest, we all shot at the Chelsea, you know, uh, which uh, gives it a really interesting look. Sure. Um, um, and, uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy with it. Yeah, it's basically I mean, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's basically about the history of the hotel and how it was conceived from the start as a residence for artists, which I think that's mind blowing because you know they were this this um, French architect put it together, you know, started the whole nice. thing, and um, he was involved with all these uh, utopian ideas coming from Europe. You know that we could live a better life, like a like a, like a socialistic uh, utopian. Yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, totally. Yes, uh, his name was Jean Jambra or something like that. His surname, you know, his family name. Anyway, I just thought that was amazing and fascinating. So I wanted, you know, I wanted to know more about it, and you know, I was thinking, well. I'm sure a lot of people are going to find out about this for the first time, like I am finding out about this. And then there's this whole angle about the ghost. But originally, the, just the title came to me, like, oh, yeah, Ghost of the Chelsea. But I was thinking of the people that live there and that passed away. I wasn't thinking of actual ghosts, right? Oh, yeah. But then when, when I started doing the interviews, people started telling me stories about actual ghost sightings and their paranormal experiences at the hotel. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. So besides the history of the hotel, at the end, we have this segment where we, you know, have all this, you know, this segment with all these people talking about their experiences at the Chelsea. 
including you, Rucker, Rucker yeah. Mike. Yeah, you everybody. Know, we I have, actually have uh, a very small part in the film. I talk about a, my paranormal experience there. So yeah, that's very creepy. That's that story you told is very creepy as well. So, but yeah. I mean, I, I was just really amazed that out of twenty five people, half of them literally had stories, paranormal stories and whatnot. You know, or they knew about their friend who told them this and that. There's really freaky stuff, you know. I mean, I'm I, I'm into that stuff, but I never thought I would cover anything related to that stuff. And this but, is a you know, very different. Uh, this is a very different kind of film for you too. I mean, you you know you yeah. you've dealt with music mostly for for your, uh, yeah. your documentaries, uh, or at least music all of, themed. all of them are music related, and this one is also music related, but. You know, there's also, we talk about Mark Twain staying at the Chelsea and Morrows and people like Harry Smith and people right. who were not musicians, you know, we, we talk about them you know, as well. But, you know, there's also a segment on Didi Ramon with uh, Didi footage. Ramon, yeah. yeah, we've unearthed this footage of Didi at the Chelsea with that nobody's seen before. It's really interesting stuff, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, all, all in all, this it's really... It's a really informative piece, I would say. Okay, so Rob, we've uh, we got a trailer that we we're going to show here for everybody yep. interested. Can you put it up? So stand by and watch the trailer on Ghosts of the Chelsea. Okay, give me a second to get the clip up. It really was a place for rare individuals. I mean, I know that's their motto, but it really was. It's a classic place, and so many great artists have always been here over the years. It was Disneyland for sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It was a wild, almost like an insane asylum with some of the things that were going on. Bob wants to meet you. I went over to the, uh, to the Chelsea. She opens the door and the smoke I mean, you couldn't see anything because they were rolling spliffs in the New York Times. Coming here was a special event for me because there'd always be uh, luminaries. And obviously the Chelsea is just directly intertwined with the Warhol world. Wow, this is like such an incredible part of history. I never saw anything beautiful here. I never saw anything nice here. I saw a ghost. I said, yeah, he's a gay ghost. Well, when you walk, through the halls of the Chelsea, you can really feel this kind of energy. Certain places have certain powers, and this hotel has, has that power to make you want to create. It's Cheerio, Mysterio, friends and pirouette. It's Cheerio, my Cheerio, there's life in me yet, yet. <laughs> that is a great trailer, Danny. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I man. Know. I mean, it makes you really just want to go run out and see this film. Uh, you know, I, I, I just have to add in for a second. You know, I, I've, I'm a native New Yorker. I've been in the Chelsea many times, uh, either as a staying there for the night or, or working there for, for many years. And it really is like it, it, it's like this. It's totally different than any other structure in the neighborhood. OK, when you walk around Chelsea, the buildings all have a particular look. And then you have, boom, this this building here on 23rd between 7th and 8th that is just an iconic structure, an iconic building, the history behind it. You can feel the history in that place when you're in there, you know. Uh, and, and it's just, to me, I, what I noticed in, like, most of your movies, uh, the Chelsea does play a part, a small part, either with, Sid Vicious, the story with him, yeah, and, and yeah. you know, um, the Max's movie and stuff, it comes up. Um, I know people like Patty Smith played there, uh, live there, and and, and yeah. uh, with Maple Thorpe and all that. Um, yeah. But let me ask you, in your, in your making of the movie and researching on it, why do you think the hotel was just so attractive to artists, writers, and musicians? Because it was conceived for uh, as a residence for artists, so therefore you always had waves of artists there that would attract others to come because the rent was cheap. You could live there cheaply, and you come out the door and you find really interesting people all the time. So you also you 
you didn't have to leave the hotel if you didn't want. You could eat right there at the Quixote next door, which is part of the hotel. I've been there many times. The yeah, and there were drug the dealers. Restaurant. There were drug dealers there back in the day, so you could buy blow or or smoke or whatever. There were prostitutes there. Yeah. All certain stuff, right? So you could spend probably weeks without living in Chelsea. You know what I mean? So that's very attractive for artists, you know, and yeah. lunatics alike. And, and early know? on, like in the 70s, which was probably one of the heydays of the hotel, uh, it was inexpensive. People could, people could live there for weeks or months on end and you could afford it. Not anymore. Yeah. And also Stanley Bard, the owner and manager, you know, it was really, you know, kind to artists and would allow them to stay even without money, even without pay. And, you know, he sometimes he would get paintings or, you know, rights to a song or something, you know, because the artists would, would pay that way, you know, it was a barter system. It's very interesting, the story. The whole thing is very, very interesting. And it's kind of sad how it ended up, you know, I mean, now there's new management after like four different owners who yeah. sort of ransack the place, you know, because they had really amazing paintings, you know, Larry Rivers, who, you know, also lived there. They had a lot of like valuable stuff. And, you know, some of these new owners sort of took it and, you know, like Colleen or Weinstein had to sue to get her husband's, late husband's artwork back and stuff. You know? So it's wow. really crazy. Yeah, it's really crazy. It's kind of sad. I mean, now at least the hotel is looking really good and it's back functioning. And, you know, you can look at the facade and everything and you can go and there's like a new bar inside. So, yeah. I mean, they're taking care of, at least they're taking care of it. So the ghosts of the Chelsea, you know, can be happy again. Yeah, well, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> no, they're not going anywhere. That's yeah. Just, you yeah. know why that place was also very uh, convenient for people? Because back then there was a huge club scene there. You had like you had like you had like freaking um, Roxy's. You had like um, ten eighteen. Like you had a, you had a bunch of clubs. You had the limelight. You they know, even had, had clubs show. in the basement, Rob. There's been uh -huh. clubs in the basement. And there was clubs in the basement. But I mean, just that area, there was mm -hmm. like probably 20, 30 clubs in in a walking distance. Like you walk up Seventh Avenue, you had the limelight. Yep. You had yeah. trance that they could yeah. play live music. You had so many venues back in the days, you know, the building, yeah. you know, was the happening. tunnel. There was also Mothers was across the street. That was yeah. that was popular for a while, closer to Eighth Avenue. Yeah. Uh, I know I don't know the Heartbreakers played there, so I'm sure they spent time in the Chelsea right before. Yeah, they had oh, yeah, the great the Ramones, there too. There. Yeah, and the Ramones too. Yeah. I mean that was a yeah. cool club, you know. Yeah. So Peter Crowley started that. I mean, the gigs at the at Mother's Tour. Right, right. <laughs> so just just to kind of reiterate, I mean, in, in, in making the film, you're, you're, you're convinced the place is haunted, right? Well, yeah, I'm pretty much convinced. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't pick up on that, but, you know, there's so many stories and everybody that spoke to us spoke to us very frankly so i don't doubt on anybody you know i mean i'm sure what they're telling us is the truth and i mean i know my michael imperioli who is in the film as well he told that story in one of these ghost programs paranormal whatever celebrity ghost stories he already told that story like 20 years ago and he told us again but then there's another story that that victor Caliccio that who wrote Summer of Sam with Michael Imperioli had yeah. another incident at Michael Imperioli's room. You know, it's like, wow, dude, you know, it's, it's, it's actually something. I actually wanted, I got in touch with this crew of paranormal called Gotham Paranormal, I think they call, but they wanted, you know, the owners of the hotel to sign a release form so they could, you know, do their experiments. Up and down the hotel and stuff, so you know that complicated things obviously and didn't happen. Which yeah. you know that would have been a total different documentary. <laughs> sure, sure. Now it's almost like a, a research type thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, you, you just mentioned the owners. Uh, how were they as far as you filming there? Everybody was cool with you. Or? 
Yeah, man. I mean, nobody, because we, we were going up and down the Chelsea with Man Lai, who lives there on the first floor. She lives like on the same hallway where Sita Nancy, you know, right? She lives yeah, wow. right there. Dude. Oh, actually, in the film, there's a photo that this woman took like 20 years ago. And there's a ghostly figure appearing at, um, at the door on, on the on, on the hallway in the hallway, you know, this, outside this outside the Sid Nancy room, just just outside Manlai's room, which is the oh. same hallway that leads to Sid and Nancy. But the woman doesn't look like Nancy. There's a, definitely a female figure yeah. showing up, and we, and we got that picture in the film. So oh, there's wow. actually proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really crazy. Oh man! Wow. That's amazing. Can't wait to see this. So yeah. this kind of film now is is very, you know, like I said before, very different than what you've been doing. Are you going to yeah. do any more music documentaries or what do you have lined yes. up? Next? I, yeah, I mean, you know, I can't, I didn't promise myself I wasn't going to do more music documentaries, but I'm l looking to doing all this stuff. But Something got in me, and I uh, got in. Um, actually, what got in me was I wanted to do a documentary on the Stooges. Oh, um, because I got hold of this interview of um, Ron Ashton with Ron Ashton, and it's like an hour long, and it's a beautiful interview. And I thought, wow, I could build something around this, but you know, Iggy's manager doesn't approve, and you know, I kind of told him to fuck off. So I'm gonna have to wait. But I started interviewing people around the studios or people who were in the studios, like Jimmy Reka, you know, mm -hmm. so I got material already. So maybe in the future, you know, whenever uh, I'll, I'll put this together, you know, if wow. I get some, if I get music rights or not, we'll see. But, that's, that's, um, always been, that's always been a problem for you, right? Like with the rights and, you know, oh, man. No, it's an album. I mean, the Clash documentary um has a lot of clash music because i had this backer so you know there was some money spent there um johnny thunders we had all this music because we did a co-production with jungle records so yeah. jungle owned a lot of thunders uh, of his discography so that's the way we have to do it man because um it's always hard i mean for the steve documentary they were asking for astronomical Figures for you know like three minutes of Lords of the New Church music whatever, so we couldn't get as much as we wanted. It's always a problem, always a problem. You know, when when yeah. you're an indie filmmaker and you know I usually don't have a backer. You know, that's the thing we have to put our own money up yeah, or get advances. Yeah, or get advances from the distributor and you know crowdfunding, all sorts of stuff. You know. That's the reality of indie filmmaking, man. You know, it's not easy. It's never easy. But we've been really lucky because, I mean, we've made friends along the way, people who like what we do, who want to help us. And, you know, like in nightclubbing, we have an amazing soundtrack because of yeah. that, you know, yes. because of all the connections we've managed to, to make in the last few years. And, you know, People like Cynthia Rose, B Girls, or Sonny Vincent, the Testers, Stimulators. I mean, there's so many people that have contributed to make it happen. I mean, you know, the music from Shrapnel that we got is amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or I mean, you have this amazing, you have this amazing ensemble Jane County. of people. You know? Jane, Jane, we got Jane County in the documentary. I mean, for me, that's like wow, that's yeah. amazing. Elliot Murphy. I mean, night climbing is pretty cool, man. You know, people like it, so yeah, yeah. I just yeah. hope that I hope people like this one because it's very different. I think they will, and you, you know, just to point out, I, I, you have some of the same people in your past films in this one, okay? So, and it's a different kind of movie. So, you have this amazing ensemble of people that you use here and there. Yeah. You know, it all works, yeah. Danny. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know, man. I don't even know myself. You know, to, be <laughs> to be honest, I just interview people and then I try to put it together as gracefully as possible. That's the, that's yeah. the, that's the honest truth. 
but I love what I do. So there's love in it, you know, and that's the secret ingredient for your recipe, my friend. Right, exactly. Same, same with you and your program. You put love into what you do. That's why it yeah. comes out great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's important to love what you do, whether whatever it is, you know. It's important. Yeah, man. You know. Yeah, so, all right, sure. Danny, I want to thank you for coming on. And, uh, you. you know, I, I, I'm glad that uh, this film is, is coming out now on the 5th in New York City, uh, the 7th in Massachusetts, and then back again on, in New York City on the 11th. Uh, that's at Joe's Pub in New York City. So everybody check that out. Go to the website, buy tickets. I think yeah. there's some left. Uh, well, there's always, also premieres in San Francisco and Dallas and Portland, Seattle. So, wow. um, yeah. So, yeah, stay stay. Stay alert. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll put something up, too, on this podcast, you know, some links and stuff cool. to help you out. Yeah. You know? Thank you, man. Thank All you. right. So, Danny Garcia, Ghosts of the Chelsea and Other Rock and Roll Stories. Everybody check out this film. Thank you, Danny. Yeah. Thank you, guys. See you next right. time. Take Have care. a good one. Yep. Bye-bye. I'm getting lumped up with Rock and Rock and Rob Rossi. I'm getting lumped up with Rock and Rock and Rob Rossi. Well, I'm lumped up, but I'm okay. It's gonna get lumped up anyway. You better call back the pasta. Just getting lumped up with Rock and Rock and Rob Rossi. Getting lumped up with Rock and Rock and Rob Rossi.